फाइव सेकेंड्स टू गो स्टार्ट विद दिस आई वुड लाइक टू मेक अ फ्यू सजेशंस नथिंग वेरी ओरिजिनल बट आई वुड लाइक टू कन्वे दैम फ्रॉम माय साइड फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल अबाउट दिस नेशनल वॉलेंटियर सर्विस आई वुड लाइक दिस गवर्नमेंट टू काइंडली थिंक सीरियसली आई वुड सजेस्ट दैट स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम द ऑफिसर्स लेवल आई ए एस आई पी एस ओल क्लास वन ऑफिसर्स शुड सर्व अबाउट फाइव ईयर्स इन द आर्मी यू कैन रेड्यूस द साइज ऑफ द आर्मी यू कैन रेड्यूस दैम टू द हार्ड कोर एंड हैव अ शोर्ट ऑफ आर्मी विच इज नीडिंग शोर्ट नोटिस फॉर मोबिलाइजेशन एंड टू स्टार्ट विथ वी शुड गो इन for this officer class from ias ips all class 1 officers give them a 3 to 5 year period it will not only give you a standing army for which you do not have to spend direct money but it will also improve the character of this nation which is decaying very fast now the same exercise should go down to the level of other ranks i do not know what sort of problems are there if there are any problems at least let this be open to the public debate the government should appoint a committee to go into this matter but nobody won't even to talk about it this idea will not only give financial freedom but will also help you in improving the fast deteriorating national discipline and character the next thing i want to bring to the notice of the government in the same context is the side stepping of the service persons who retire from the service we train a person for about 20 years and when we send him home at the age of 30 or 35 years till he dies doing nothing they are well trained and later they are being allowed to decay and die not only that over a period of time they will also become a problem for the nation in terms of discipline and behavior why can we not utilize this man power i keep on saying this also but nobody is willing to get this examined very seriously some people say it will result in unemployment but you can save so much money if you utilize this man power and you can create fresh avenues for much more employment therefore this idea of utilization of trained man power is in the interest of the nation respected honorable speaker this house is once again debating the situation in ayodhya obviously the concern of the house not only extends to the problem at ayodhya it is in fact a problem created by a set of people who go by political parties name who have decided in their wisdom and perhaps also in their desperation to project the issue which they want to utilize as a political instrument to achieve power 
under the democratic dispensation which this country happens to have today the second thing is every attempt at finding peaceful and amicable solution which has been made time and again has been deliberately thwarted by the same set of people as is well documented i do not have to repeat it the third thing is perhaps they count upon the passivity and the indifference of the people of this country who struggled for independence under the leadership of stalwarts like mahatma gandhi pandit jawaharlal nehru sardar patel shri molana azad and a host of great leaders they perhaps feel that the charisma the spark that it had at freedom movement had died down and on its ashes a reactionary to totalitarian and fully irrational political system can be built up simply because they have the muscle power they feel that are portraying the will of the people they feel that they are going to get what they want if not through the ballot box on a sleek has laid down by the election laws of this country the constitution they will achieve it by prevarication by false representation and when necessary by force of arms in all humility i would like to say you may in your wisdom think that is possible but between you and your so called ambition stand the phalanx and phalanx of people of this country who are not yet prepared to give up what we have been bequeathed by the freedom fighters of this country by the martyrs of this country and those who conceived of an india which is not only free from political bondage but of an india which at least is struggling to free itself from economic and social bondage and an india where everyone whatever his caste creed or religion may be has an equal right to flourish and go ahead and reap the fruits of the benefits of his labor what is at stake today is not what somebody wants to achieve and what he will get stop